Now that we have our five-year forecast of free cash flow to the firm, we need to calculate our terminal value, and then we need to calculate the transaction cash flow. So we assume that the terminal value is going to be equal to EBITDA in the final year of the business times 8. So 8 is most likely at this point a slightly forward-looking EBITDA multiple if this business is put on sale in a process that starts in early 2022 but doesn't actually close until December 31st, 2022. So we've used eight times what would be a slightly forward-looking EBITDA when this transaction is being negotiated of eight times 101, 554. So that gives us our terminal value right here. Then what we can do is we can calculate the transaction free cash flow. So I'm going to link this exit number here, and then I'm going to make a new row down below where I'm going to call this the transaction free cash flow to the firm. And what I need to do here is I need to make an adjustment. So the first thing is, if I want to value the business as a standalone without giving consideration to what I paid for it, I'm going to put a zero right there. And you'll see how that comes in handy later. But I'm going to format it as blue since it's a hard code. Then what I need to do is multiply the free cash flow to the firm in each period by the percentage of the year that we apply up top. Because as you'll recall, this first year is a stub year. We're not buying the business on January 1st. We're buying it on March 31st. So we don't get this full 24. We only get 18. Now I can fill this formula across. And we've got now our transaction free cash flow. Below that, I'm going to make another space where we're going to calculate the IRR based on free cash flow to the firm. Now to calculate IRR, we're actually going to need a purchase price that's going to come in here. So the purchase price we will fill in later. And in the meantime, we can link these other cash flows to refer to the row above. All right, now we're going to calculate the intrinsic value of this business. And this little table here where we write intrinsic value and initially, it's going to give us the enterprise value since we're doing unlevered free cash flow here. But then we want to add the cash and deduct the debt so we can arrive at the equity value as well. And I'm just going to put a border on this so that we have a neatly organized little table here. So this formula right here is going to be equal to XNPV, which we've covered in other courses, but as a refresher, the XNPV applies specific dates to cash flows, so it is a far superior form of discounting than regular NPV. The discount rate, which we've set up here at 12%, it's the weighted average cost of capital, and then the corresponding cash flows and dates for this transaction. So here are the cash flows. You'll notice zero cash flows being received on the date of the transaction close, but we need to include that so that we discount the cash flow all the way back to this first date here. So we've now matched the cash flows to the dates that we laid out above. And when I press enter, we get this enterprise value for the business. Now what we can do is just adjust for cash and debt to arrive at equity value and equity value per share. So now what we're going to do is we're going to link the cash from the balance sheet. And we're going to pick the cash at the end of 2017 as that's the closest to the transaction date that we have a cash balance for. So we'll take the cash there. And then we'll take the debt off the balance sheet as well at the end of 2017, the closest number we have to the transaction date. And then we can calculate the equity value being the enterprise value plus the cash minus the debt. 
We can go one step further and down here we can put the equity value per share. And in order to calculate that, we take the equity value and we divide it by, up in the assumptions here, we outline the number of shares outstanding. So we get $35.40 per share. I'm actually going to go ahead and format this to really stand out since this is the main value that we're looking for in this model. Now we've got our intrinsic value per share for this business and our intrinsic enterprise value for this business using the XNPV function.